hello and welcome back it's great to have you on this channel in this video we'll continue the discussion bayesian decision theory here we have a uh, classification based on minimum error rate and what we are trying to say is that if i which is the predicted class is equal to j which is the correct or true class then that's a correct decision and so there's no loss associated with that decision However, if the uh, prediction and true classes are incorrect, uh, they do not match, then it's an incorrect decision. And so there's a penalty or loss of one associated with it. And that can that uh, loss is used, zero one loss can be used here to calculate the conditional risk. So we multiply it again by posterior probability and we can calculate the conditional risk as shown here for all classes from j to j is equal to 1 to c we can also uh, calculate the re conditional risk by this relation uh, where the summed values for posterior probability when j is not equal to i and uh, converse of that if we subtract those values from 1 then we get the posterior probabilities for uh, the omega i now if we use that relation when we look at this if we maximum to for us to minimize the conditional risk what we want to do is maximize the posterior probability so the negative value will increase and so the conditional risk would decrease and thus the decision with minimum error rate then is given here we want to classify the sample as uh, belonging to uh, the class omega i if the posterior probability for omega i given x is greater than that of the posterior probability for omega j given x and this is for when i is not equal to j so j is not equal to i so uh, uh, for with minimum error rate then um, if we look at this particular plot on the left hand side which is the posterior probability uh, we can uh, you look at that and compare it with the plot on the right hand side which is for the likelihood ratio so the idea is that if we, for likelihood ratio we can set up a threshold uh, shown here by the dotted magenta line uh, theta a and so if the likelihood ratio is above that particular data point then it's classified as belonging to uh, that class so let's say and this follows the similar trend as what we have here and the r1 is the region that is classified for class 1 r2 is the region that is classified in feature space for class 2 and so on here so the part where this curve for the likelihood ratio is above the threshold and that is where the value for omega r and omega 1 is greater and that's where the uh, classification is in the realm of uh, the um, r1 so that's r1 here r2 here r1 again here and that's r r2 now we can also increase or decrease the threshold so if we set the threshold up higher here then uh, these uh, would not blow no longer apply because the part where the values are above theta b is only right here so only those would be classified as omega 1 class and the rest everything would be would have been classified as omega 2 now minimax classification helps in cases where there are a range of priors so let's say uh, on the in the food processing plant uh, for the vegetables that are coming in sequence uh, we have uh, additional information let's say uh, after um, let's say when we have two carrots in there uh, uh, we know that the progression could be two 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 but at the moment we see more let's say five carrots piled up together uh, it could tell that the next few images would have more than 
two carats it could be five carats in that particular image and so on so there could be other there could be other information associated with this or uh, this could be the uh, learned information by the model over the past hour that could be used as a prior uh, to uh, classify the next uh, set of images and so the minimax classification then is given uh, here where the overall risk is the integral of over r1 and then um, added to the integral over r2 for the products of loss and the conditional and prior probability uh, that they shown here so r1 is the region where we classify the data point if it exists in the r1 space as uh, belonging to uh, the class omega 1 otherwise it's belonging to this class omega 2 and uh, points to note here is that so this equation can be simplified by noting that the probability for omega 2 is equal to 1 minus the probability of omega 1 and the integral or r1 for the conditional probability uh, p of x given given omega 1 class is equal to 1 minus the integral over r2 space for the same class and so the minimax risk uh, then can be uh, uh, derived through this equation that is shown which uh, which uh, has the term for conditional probability however it does not have the term for prior probability that we started with the overall risk and it is denoted by rmm now on this plot what we have is the prior probability on the x axis and the error probability of error on the y axis and this blue curve that we see that's the minimum base error as a function of prior probability so the intuition here is that if we move along the dots along this line and let's consider this dot magenta dot and if you draw a tangent to that if we move along if we increase the prior then uh, the error increases if we select that data point so the maximum error goes much higher uh, shown here by the green point the idea is to find a minimum uh, base or a base error which gives us the minimum maximum error so if we select a point such as this one where if we draw a tangent the slope is zero and so even if we uh, increase the prior from zero to say one in this case the magenta line uh, stays constant at 0 0.02 error and so the base error does not increase as the prior probability increases and so that's the takeaway message for the minimax criteria uh, then there is a neyman pearson criterion as well uh, we won't go into the details of this uh, just want to mention that this is based on the um, decision where your risk total risk is less than the preset constant uh, then that information is used for classifying a particular sample as if it belongs to class i or class j that was it for this video and next video will continue this discussion until then please like share and subscribe thank you